Hello and welcome back. US oil prices turn negative as demand dries up from nobody driving around and air crew being grounded, which of course leads to Virgin Airways suffering terribly with Branson offering his Caribbean island to secure a Virgin bailout, trying to remortgage it, if you will. But first, Ofcom tells us that there are some people, there are some opinions that we're not allowed to air. For the sake of public safety, there are some people you can't talk to. There are some things you can't say. There are some ideas that you can't put across. Instead, you have to conform to the scientific consensus and go along with the agreed science. Yes, that might change in the future, in which case you might have misled people, but that is a risk they are willing to take. The regulator said Holmes' remarks had been ambiguous and ill-judged. This is coming off of his uh, This Morning show on ITV, talking about David Icke and the thoughts on 5G, of course. Ofcom said they risked undermining viewers' trust in advice from public authorities and scientific evidence. Well, isn't that brilliant? Isn't that fantastic? That's them admitting that, yes, we have a narrative that we want to push, and we don't appreciate anybody trying to suggest otherwise. So that is what we will continue to do. The regulator also found local TV channel London Live in breach of standards for an interview it aired with David Icke about coronavirus. Conspiracy theorist Icke, it said, had expressed views which had the potential to cause significant harm to viewers in London during the pandemic. Not linking it to 5G directly, but London Live was in breach of their standard, of course, for suggesting that such a thing could be the case. So, when they go on to mention with Holmes that... He said, I totally agree with everything you are saying, but what I don't accept is mainstream media immediately slapping that down as not true when they don't know it's not true. No one should attack or damage or do anything like that, but it's very easy to say it is not true because it suits the state narrative, he continued. Which is... I mean, it is it is technically true. Um, when he's talking about the scientific evidence that they're saying, well, you could disprove it because you're saying that the radiation and the energy from the, uh, the 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 airwaves essentially of the energy used to transmit the information is not enough in order to radiate DNA in order to cause mutations which could cause coronavirus. Um, I mean we, we know it's not true anyway because of where coronavirus springs up compared to where 5G is being put in so it's definitely not true. Should you be able to entertain the idea? Yeah you should but they're saying no because people are taking down towers, attacking them, burning them, vandalizing property, uh, because of individual people's actions, you're no longer allowed to talk about this. That is what it comes down to. So you are responsible for your audience. So, of course, he apologized of sorts, saying, for the avoidance of any doubt, I want to make it completely clear, there's no scientific evidence to substantiate any of those 5G theories. Which is correct. Fair enough. So what did Ofcom have to say about it? In our view, Eamon Holmes' ambiguous comments were ill-judged and risked undermining viewers' trust in advice from public authorities and scientific evidence, it said. Even if the evidence changes, of course, seeing as we're now questioning, well, is the cure worse than the problem? Are you saying that we're not allowed to talk about this, seeing as it goes against the scientific evidence? The, the people, of course, the, the virologists that nobody really cared about for a while, the people who would look into pandemics uh, from history and, and around the world and what could possibly spring up if it is going to be respiratory-related or not that yes we've we've got to go along with them of course um of course the scientific consensus is there for a reason which means that not everybody agrees whereas science doesn't matter about opinion it is fact over feelings that's why ben shapiro loves it so much so they say his statements were also highly sensitive in view of the recent attacks on mobile phone masks in the uk caused by conspiracy theories linking 5g technology and the virus so yes be Take the responsibility of your audience. Broadcasters have editorial freedom to discuss and challenge the approach taken by public authorities to a serious public health crisis such as the coronavirus, it continued. So, he can say what he wants. However, <laughs> the fancy but. Discussions about unproven claims and theories which could undermine viewers' trust in official public health information must be put fully into context to ensure viewers are protected. So to say, you, you can't outrule it, but it's not supported. How much more context do you want? I mean, we're being told that it's not true. And if it's the state narrative, that is true. What context are you looking for? The context that they're looking for is to say, it's definitely not true. Here's what some crazy people are talking about, but we should ignore them. That's that's it. Which, of course, leads people, as, as I'm sure you're aware of, to try and say, 
that yes, so this this is something that's definitely not happening, and you definitely shouldn't act on it in these particular ways. I'm telling you to definitely not do that. Hmm. And the, the same goes, of course, for, for calls of violence uh, for ages. They're saying, oh, this is a terrible person, and they don't listen to anything but violence. I'm not telling anybody to to cause violence towards them. Um, they, they have a uh, particular weakness, given that they always frequent this bar when they leave at 2 a.m. Nobody should cause harm to them, though. Is is that kind of thing? The, mm, yeah, okay. Is that, is that what you're encouraging us to do? I guess. So they don't like London Live either, which of course is pointed out by the Russian businessman, Evgeny Lebedev, who also owns the Evening Standard and independent newspapers. So they, they mention that the vandalism caused as well and basically say that you can't talk about it. Um, and they, they do mention several flaws, including, as I say, coronavirus is spreading in UK cities where 5G is yet to be deployed and in countries like Japan and Iran that have yet to adapt the technology. So it doesn't work. But, hey, BBC, actually trying to be fair and balanced, that they do mention that while it is recommended slightly tighter limits on the transmitting capabilities of handsets themselves to minimize any chance of damage caused by human tissue being heated, its key finding was that there was no evidence that either 5G networks or earlier systems could cause cancer or other kinds of illness. And this was from scientists at the International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. <laughs> Non-ionizing. I like that. Instead of unionizing, because then it's just unionizing. <laughs> the second theory appears to be based on the work of a Nobel Prize winning biologist who suggests a bacteria could generate radio waves. But they're saying, no, no, it's, it's well outside mainstream scientific thought, so we don't accept it. It's not mainstream. I mean, of course, for something to be a radical breakthrough, then it can't be mainstream. But hey, Point is, yeah, the, the conspiracy theory is wrong, sure. Should we have such limitations on speech? Mm, no. So US oil prices turn negative as demand dries up. So they've got too much, um, storing it costs too much, and therefore people want to get rid of it because even selling it as a loss isn't as much of a loss as if they have to store it themselves. And that's why we see it going negative, because they are saving money in a way, even though they're not making money, they're just losing less money. So you might be wondering, oh, well, if, if this is the, the, the price of the barrels, then that's fantastic. That means all the fuel is going to be cheaper. And that, that means we're going to be able to drive around cheaper. So surely then the, the price of petrol as well has decreased substantially. Well, no, no, it hasn't. Because about 65 pence of it is tax at the moment. About two thirds of it is tax. So no, I'm, I'm afraid not. The fuel duty tax is astronomically high in the UK. So it, it doesn't fluctuate that much because the tax props it up so much. But yeah, if you want to get investing into oil, might be an idea. This is just out of America though, um, in Texas in particular. Um, the response we've seen from other people, of course, with OPEC and um, Russia, that they've agreed to cut production by a record amount, as they say. So is this a cartel price fixing? Maybe. Allegedly. But I can't say that. As <laughs> we've just got over. So, <clears throat> yeah, surely everybody's happy there. The planet is breathing. They're cutting production in order to, to keep up with the, uh, you know, supply and demand. The, the demand has dropped, so now they have to drop the supply. So who's that affected? Of course, it's affected air carriers, including Virgin. Including Richard Branson. So, Richard, sorry who moved to Necker Island 14 years ago in the the Virgin Islands. Coincidence, I promise you. The idea of Virgin was when they were teenagers and creating an idea, they went, well, none of us are Virgin, so we might as well have one around. Yeah, rather, rather crass, crass joke, but sure. He went to Necker Island just because he wanted to get away from it all with a woman who was married when he first met her and kind of helped to end the marriage, which was on the rocks anyway. <clears throat> very questionable chap but they went out and were told well hey if you pretend that you're going to buy an island then they'll put you up for free so go do that so he did that and they went right so this this is on offer for three million quid three million dollars rather so how, how much are you are you looking to three million quid yeah how much are you looking to spend so um a hundred thousand 100,000 quid, 150,000 dollars, how's that? I went, what are you on about? And therefore, of course, they didn't keep their lodging. A few months later, as it happened, 
the guy who owned the island um because it was very barren at the time they needed to sort out the the water and the sewage and have it connected and if they didn't do it in five years then the government would buy it off them again um so he wanted three million but then he had a development idea in scotland for two hundred thousand pounds so Brent went oh, 175,000 there you go nothing I went 180,000 and it's yours I went okay yeah sure not knowing what he was getting himself into um, and of course that's nowhere near the 3 million pounds what is it now well he's saying he wants to mortgage it for half a million half a billion pounds the idea that he's worth well over 4 billion but of course seeing as uh, a load of it's um <clears throat> liquid if you will that it's it's moving about so it's not actually his net worth he can't just pull it out it doesn't quite work that way it's not as if he's got that much stored up for a rainy day uh, so unfortunately not <clears throat> so he says here uh, in his open letter to virgin employees virgin has invested a quarter of a billion dollars since the pandemic started to help our business and protect jobs he's trying to go at this with the idea that hey we've helped you guys out now we'd like a bit of help in return in the terms of an investment of sorts or a loan if you will <clears throat> virgin orbit teams are building ventilators to tackle COVID 19 virgin galactic teams are building oxygen hoods virgin atlantic teams are flying in critical medical supplies virgin has invested more than 75 million pounds into the nhs virgin has never and will never take a penny out of the nhs virgin atlantic employees virtually unanimously decided to take a wage reduction spread over six and a half months to save as many jobs as possible <clears throat> If the UK government does help Virgin Atlantic to survive, it will not be free money, but will be paid on commercial terms, so not a bailout as such. Virgin money giving does not and will never make a profit. Millions more go directly to charity because we are a non-profit and Virgin money are covering the small platform fee instead of them taking their small percentage cut the most do. <clears throat> he lives on NECA because he loves the PVIs, the British Virgin Islands. Our companies all pay tax in the countries they operate in, uh, which is in a response, of course, to saying, well, Hey, if, if you moved there years ago, you're not paying income tax anymore. <clears throat> well, a simple response would be, well, maybe lower the income tax. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem with brain drain and the clever people leaving your country, then maybe it's time that you readjusted and thought, huh, actually, if it's cheaper to own, an, <laughs> own your own island, then maybe we should drop those taxes in order to encourage you to come back here. Uh, he's saying, it's not that anyway. It's because he, he loves the the Necker Island being able to get away from it all and if you read about it not only that the history of course why it means so much to him but how he makes it work for himself you can understand very much um, and the island now is a business in and of itself employing almost 200 staff uh, on a full-time basis 165 I think it is uh, in in order to, to keep things going on the island most of my time is spent raising millions for our non-profit foundation Virgin Unite I cover all of its overheads, ensuring 100% of money raised supports philanthropic causes from mental health to human rights to tackling the climate crisis. And of course, has to tackle the climate crisis, given that he's in the airline business. So, he's trying to win over the UK government, saying, well, you're supporting BA, um, which used to be state-owned, of course. So, so, help me as well, seeing as there wasn't any competition there, and prices are going to increase, and that's why he I thought he had a way in with Virgin Atlantic looking after um, Freddie Laker and his airline and learn from his mistakes. And then the same thing in Australia, where he said, well, all you've got there is Qantas, or Qantas, but they don't have a U, so it's Qantas. And therefore, the prices there are going to increase as well. So it's better for everyone in the long run if we can stay afloat in order to offer better prices and, and a more fun time, of course, with the, the launch of his first aircraft showing the film Airplane. Which, which thankfully went down well because it was mainly the, the crew and they had a load of champagne as well and were celebrating so it was, it was all fun it wasn't a serious endeavour at all <clears throat> so Richard offered to inject a quarter of a billion pounds into the Virgin Group last month with most of that going to the airline early this month Rolls Royce, Airbus, Heathrow Airport and Manchester Airport's groups sent a letter to the government highlighting the importance of Virgin Atlantic to the UK's manufacturing supply chain so they are trying to get help and again not a bailout per se but a loan Australian government not playing ball. Um, he wanted a £720 million pound loan. They went, <laughs> lol no. They're protecting Qantas. As he mentions. Goes on to mention about his tax situation. There you go. Over time we built our family home on Necker. The rest of the island is run as a business which employs 175 people. So, does he have questionable moral standards because he's rather impulsive? Yes, yes he does. 
is he expecting things that are unfair? I don't think so. Is he trying to offer up something as as compensation? I think so. Does the, the sentimental value of it mean that he can get more from it from other buyers? No, and he knows that. So even though it means a lot to him, he knows that it doesn't to other people, and therefore he's priced it accordingly. Is he going to be able to get the bailout? Mm. Mm. We, we, should, we should wait and see. But when you've got big players like the airports and the Rolls Royce and manufacturing industries saying that they, they need him in order to help them, I, I think he will. So is he too big to fail? I I think he is. Is that a problem? Well, if he can get a loan and people agree with it, if it's government-backed, then yeah, there's a problem with it. But if you can get private investors to say it's going to be worthwhile in the long run, then go ahead. If he wants to try and push the, the, the public idea of trading on the stock market, then by all means do that. So, yet to see, but that's where we are now. So, hey, why do we all enjoy our limited speech, unable to use the cheaper fuel that's, of course, oil being sold at a loss, and then not be able to go on holiday anywhere because the prices will have gone sky high because of monopolies in the... Uh, in the market, which of course will eventually be taken over by somebody else other than Branson, uh, which he's aware of because he took over from Laker, but of course doesn't want to, to lose out because who does? So until next time, have a good one.